I believe that this is your moment for a miracle. Jesus wants to make you whole. I want you to share this right now because I'm going to be teaching on the healing presence of Jesus. Now, whether you need a healing or whether you want to know how to minister healing, this message is really going to equip you in the area of the healing ministry. So share this. You never know who's going to be blessed by it. I'm believing for the anointing to begin flowing and for miracles to happen even as I teach this word because the Holy Spirit backs his word with signs following. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in worship. As you worship, I want you to forget about your sickness. I want you to try to forget about your pain. And I want you to just put your mind on the Lord. He is your healer. The scripture tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. You hold my every moment You calm my raging sea You walked with me through the fire And healed all my disease And I'll trust I'll trust in you, oh. and I believe that you're my healer, and I believe that you And I believe that you're my portion And I believe you're more than enough for me Jesus, you're all I need Yeah, you're all I need You're all I for nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. For you hold my words in your hands. Nothing is Nothing is impossible, nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands, and I believe that you're my healer, and I believe that you are all I need, Jesus. And I believe that you're my portion, and I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Oh, Jesus, you're all I need. Oh, Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. Oh, Jesus, you're all I believe in laying hands on the sick in order for them to recover because the scripture in Mark chapter 16 tells us that the believers will lay hands on the sick 
and the sick shall recover. It also tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 about the gift of healing. Jesus imparted that healing virtue into his disciples and they in turn pass it on to those who they discipled. So I believe in the laying on of hands. I want to make that perfectly clear. But if you've ever come to one of my services or you've ever seen me minister to the sick, there's also another way I minister to the sick that I believe is more effective and more beneficial in that people don't look to man, they look to God. I believe that ministering healing to people is as simple as ministering the healing presence of Jesus. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you've seen those prayer lines or you've seen those street healing videos, which I believe in and which I encourage. You've seen that the believer will lay hands on the sick and the sick person will receive through a point of contact in faith their miracle. But I believe that there is a better way. And I believe it's better, at least for me, it's the way I flow best. Perhaps it might not be the case with you, but this is one way you can minister healing to people. And again, this is ministering the healing presence of Jesus. This is where the presence of Jesus so powerfully manifests in a room or in a setting to where the sick don't even need you to lay hands on them. There have been many times where I've been on my way to a miracle service and I'm getting calls and texts as I'm on my way of people being healed even before I get there. Now, the reason I like this is because people recognize that the healer is not man, the healer is Jesus. And I wanna make that very clear. There is only one healer and his name is Jesus. This helps to take pressure off of you because all you are to do is minister to God's people. We simply lay hands on the sick. We simply minister the word. We simply minister the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit and God will do the rest and you have to trust him to be sovereign with the results. But I wanna take you to a portion of scripture found in Luke chapter five and I'm gonna read verses 12 through 14. It's a very simple message today, but I know it's going to bless you. This is what the scripture says. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. Now, there are just a few things that I've noticed in this portion of scripture that stood out to me. You know, sometimes as you read the scripture, the Holy Spirit, as you read, will begin to pour, point out certain truths and he'll begin to draw your attention to certain words. And with that, he'll give you fresh revelation. And so what the Lord showed me here, I want you to notice this. Number one, the scripture says, go to verse 12. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. Jesus met a man. Number one, Jesus must be present. And this is what I'm referring to when I talk about the healing presence of Jesus. When Jesus shows up, everything changes, and quite rapidly so. Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the giver of truth. Jesus is the baptizer. He's the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Jesus is the one who gives to us all that we need. Now, that's not why we seek his presence, but still, when you get Jesus, you get it all. When Jesus enters the room, you don't have to seek a healing. You don't have to seek deliverance. You simply seek him for the sake of who he is. When you go after him, his presence, and he comes near, sickness has to go. Bondage has to break. The power of addiction has to break. Sin has to lose its grip. The presence of Jesus is where you get it all. And so Jesus must be present. Now I know that the presence of God dwells everywhere. And I'm not talking about the omnipresence of God or even the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. I like to say that just as God is expressed in three persons, and I use that word expressed very loosely, I would rather put it just as God exists in three persons, so his presence is expressed in three ways. God the Father, his presence is expressed in the omnipresence, the everywhere presence. There's nowhere you can go to be outside of the awareness of the mind of the Father. 
Number two, the indwelling presence. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's presence is expressed in the indwelling presence. He abides in you. He takes residence in your being. He, he dwells with you. He does not leave you. He forms within you a habitation and the Spirit remains with you. And then number three, the Son, Jesus, the Word, is expressed in the manifested presence. The Word was, is, and will always be the manifested connection between God the Father and humanity. The Scripture says that the Word became flesh. This is John 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.1 1, 1, and John 1.14. The Word became flesh. He dwelt among us. So Jesus is expressed in the manifested presence. This is that sense that you get in a service. I know sometimes you've been worshiping in a church service or praying, and all of a sudden you will sense the peace. You will sense the joy. You'll sense almost like this weight or a cloud come over the room, and you know that something about the atmosphere has changed. That is the presence of Jesus, and that is the manifestation of the presence of God. It's the revealing. It's the expression. It's the tangible touch of God. Now, God is always with you, and whether or not you feel His presence is not the is not the issue at all. The presence of God is always with you. But the manifested presence is when things begin to happen in the physical. So the power of God will manifest. The anointing will manifest. You'll begin to sense, some people say they sense like fire come upon them or warmth or heat or electricity moving up and down their body. And those services are powerful. Now you can't necessarily live in that, but there are moments where God will manifest His power in that regard. And that comes from the presence of Jesus, the presence of the Son, the manifested, revealed presence of God. So people ask, what's the secret to that? They'll see miracles in our services. They say, how do you get that? Why is it that it's so easy? And it does look easy because really I don't do anything. I just stand up there at the miracle services and I tell the people, Jesus is your healer. Jesus wants to make you whole. I start preaching the word. And as I preach the word, what happens? The people begin to get a revelation. I'm going to touch on this in a moment. But the people begin to hear the word. Their faith gets stirred and they call upon Jesus in faith and something begins to take place in their heart. And so people ask, as I said, what's the secret? How do you get them healed? Well, I don't do anything. It's not a special prayer that I pray or a special prayer that I have the people repeat. It's not a special song that we sing. It's not a special message that I preach. It's not a special technique that I apply. It really is just the healing presence of Jesus. It's just the healing power of God. It's that simple. It has nothing to do with me. It has only to do with the presence of Jesus. You can't fake this. You can't manufacture it. You can't try to bring it about through systematic effort. You have to simply call upon the Lord in sincerity and say, Lord, I need your presence. Lord, I hunger for your presence. Lord, I need you near to me. And that's really all I do. I simply worship the Lord. I call upon him, say, Lord, I, I need your presence here. And Jesus is faithful. The Holy Spirit reveals him to people and they see him. And which is my next point. Look in verse 12 again. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. As soon as he saw him, faith came alive within him. How do I know faith came alive? Well, because the man asked in faith. Look what he says. He says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Well, some will say, well, he didn't ask in faith because he said if. Well, listen very carefully to what he said. He didn't say if you are able. He simply said if you are willing. The man knew with everything in his being that Jesus was perfectly capable of making him whole. Can you imagine looking at Jesus? I, I, I wish I could be there and physically stand in front of the physically manifested form of the Son of God. I just imagine that you, you could feel currents of electric, electricity and power coming out from him. Remember when the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment? She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And so she goes in and she touches him. And the moment she touches him, she's made whole. And the scripture says that Jesus felt, he physically felt power go out of him. There was a tangible power 
on the presence of Jesus or on the body of Jesus and in his presence. And he was able to make people whole with a single touch. So this man was not saying, if you can. This man was saying, if you will. In other words, I know you're able. I just want to know that you're willing. And Jesus answers the question of his will to heal the sick once and for all. In verse 13, Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. So number one, Jesus must be present. Number two, you must see Jesus. So the presence of Jesus can be in a room. The presence of Jesus can be all around you. And in fact is, I will even say it this way. When you worship the Lord and you sense his presence becoming stronger, it's not that God is coming closer, it's that you are becoming more aware of that which is always there. And that is the manifestation of the presence of God. It's when you become in faith aware of his presence. So Jesus must be present. Number two, you must see Jesus. People all too often have their eyes on men. Now, people come to our services and they demand, I want Brother David to lay hands on me. I'm not leaving till Brother David lays hands on me. And the sad thing is, is that there's nothing I can do for them. I've never once claimed to be a healer. I have no healing power. I'm just a human being. The truth is that the presence of God is what brings about healing. The power of God is what brings about healing. And so people come and they want hands laid upon them. They want, they want to stand on a prayer line. And I understand that because the scripture says to lay hands on the sick. But where I get hung up on is they want specifically me to lay hands on them. We have prayer teams out with them when the crowds get too big. And they'll say, no, no, not them. I want Brother David. But the truth is, their prayers are just as powerful as mine. Why? Because it has nothing to do with me. I'm just a vessel. And it's the healing power of God. I'll tell it to you this way. Even when I do prayer lines and I do lay hands on the sick, I go down the prayer line and I'll notice that the people who are looking at me rarely get healed. They'll watch me. I'll see, they'll, they'll watch me come down the line and they'll just stand there. And I make my way and they start to turn their head. And before you know it, I'm standing right in front of them and they're looking right at me. I go to lay hands on them. They don't even close their eyes to pray. They don't lift their hands to receive. Not that you necessarily need to do any of those things, but you can tell they're not postured to receive, that they're just waiting for me to do something instead of exercising their faith and engaging and reaching out and in faith asking to be healed. They just look at me and I lay hands. And as I said, more often than not, those people who are looking at me don't get healed. And then I'll move down the line. Someone's not even looking at me. They're just so lost in worship. They completely forgot that I'm even there. I'll go to lay hands on them. The power of God will come on them and they'll be whole. Why? Because they're looking at Jesus. Because they're seeing Jesus. The Holy Spirit reveals him. So the presence of Jesus is there. But then you must see him. The Holy Spirit takes that word. Remember I said I was going to get back to this. The Holy Spirit takes that word, takes that revelation, and he makes it real to you. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the one who magnifies, glorifies, intensifies, vivifies, and emphasizes Jesus. He is the one who makes Jesus real. He is the one who makes Jesus an ever-present reality. He is the one who takes you into the place where you can see Jesus with perfect clarity. The Holy Spirit can make Jesus so real to you that he becomes more real to you than even yourself. He becomes more real to you than even your surroundings. And the people who come to these services, the people who I've ministered to, in my experience, I see them come. They get hands laid upon them. It's the ones who are looking at Jesus that are healed, not the ones who are looking at me, not the ones who are looking at my prayer team, not the ones who are looking at the worship team, not the ones who are looking around and trying to see how they can possibly get on and, and receive prayer. No, they're the ones who are engaged in the presence of God. And when they worship, their focus turns to the face of Jesus. And the Holy Spirit moves upon that worship and something begins to happen. The atmosphere changes around them. The power of God starts flowing. They forget about their sickness. They forget about their pain. They forget that they're even there to receive a healing. And they just get lost in the presence of God. They just get lost in worship. And that draws the master to them. And when they, they see Jesus, the healing presence of Jesus is there, and they see Jesus, 
a miracle takes place in their body. When Jesus becomes more real to you than your sickness, you'll be healed. There'll be a healing that takes place in you. And number three, you have to ask. So number one, Jesus must be present. Number two, you must see Jesus. And number three, you must ask in faith. Again, he said, not if you're able. He said, if you're willing. He knew that Jesus could do it for him, and he begged Jesus for his miracle. You see, most people know what Jesus can do. They're just confused about what he is willing to do. And so let me clarify this for you. Sickness is not the will of God. Now, I need to be very careful the way I say this because I know there are many people watching who can become so easily discouraged saying, why am I not healed? You know, I can, I've done lessons on this, but the truth is God is sovereign. Oral Roberts, one of the greatest healing evangelists of all time, said, any doctrine that does not leave room for the sovereignty of God is heresy. So even healing, the doctrine of healing, that is subject to the sovereignty of God. I believe and I preach that healing is God's will for all. As to what blocks that or why that doesn't occur, there are many different options that you can find in Scripture that would tell you. I mean, there were, there, were, there were people in the Scripture, such as Timothy, who Paul said, a little wine for your stomach's sake because you are sick. Take a little wine. He, instead of healing Timothy, he said, take a little wine for your stomach's sake. There was one, one person who was traveling with Paul the Apostle that he had to leave behind in one city so that he can go forward because that person got sick. King David himself prayed for the sick. He said, I've, I've groaned and I fasted that you would heal them. He says, but you didn't reply to my prayers. So there are instances in the scripture that can help us understand why some aren't healed. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to preach healing. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to stir your faith to believe. In fact, when you think about it, everyone who Jesus healed in the New Testament in physical form, everyone who Jesus healed is now dead. Either they're with the Father or they're somewhere else. And you know what I'm talking about. So the body is temporary, but the resurrected, glorified body, that's where I believe ultimately all come to healing. But until then, that doesn't mean that we don't work to try to bring all things into subjection to the will of God. I'll give you an example. Some people say, I believe that this sickness is the will of God for my life. And I say, really? Do you take medical treatment? Do you take medication? Do you go to the doctor? They say, yes. And let me make this very clear, you absolutely should go to the doctor. Jesus even endorsed doctors when he said that the sick are in need of the doctor, not the well. And so people who say, I believe that sickness is the will of God, they don't really believe that because if they believe that sickness was the will of God, they wouldn't do anything to fight that, including medical assistance. But in fact, they know that sickness is not right. There's just something not right about sickness. Think about how it devastates families. Think about how it harms the one who is sick. How can that be the will of God? It's not. And so we must work at combating sickness through medicine, through medical practice. Yes, the Lord gave us doctors. You're a fool if you think that you shouldn't take part, participate in medical practice. And if anyone tells you that you don't have faith because you go to the doctor, just quote Jesus to them when he said the sick are the ones in need of a doctor. That's foolishness. And, and that's not what faith does. Faith does not cause us to be foolish. It causes us to be confident in a greater truth while embracing the reality in which we live. Faith engages with reality. It doesn't deny it. Faith doesn't even necessarily deny reality, but it works to transform it. So you should seek help and you should seek the the, the medical treatment, and you should seek healing in those ways, but you should also seek healing in the presence of Jesus. And he wants to make you whole. Now, it is, I believe, the will of God. And then we see something interesting, that Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. With just one touch, in one moment, Jesus made this man completely whole. And he has the power to do it for you. And then you're going to go and do what this man with leprosy did in verse 14. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony 
that you have been cleansed. In other words, he's saying, go get checked and examined officially so that you can give a public testimony. When Jesus heals you, go back to your doctor, have them check you and give a public statement about what the Lord has done for you. And then we're going to believe God for your healing right now. Let's believe that that healing virtue will flow. The healing presence, presence of Jesus is here. He wants to touch your body now. He wants to make you whole. I want you right now in this moment, as best as you can, forget about your sickness. And those of you who minister healing, that's important. Get the people to just stop thinking about their needs and start focusing on the Lord. Get them to stop looking for them to lay, for you to lay hands on them. They don't need you to lay hands on them. They just need the healing presence of Jesus. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for all who are believing for healing in their body. Now listen, you're believing for healing. Forget about the sickness. Forget about the pain. Forget about all that worries you. And just focus on your healer. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on your circumstance. Just look to Jesus. See Jesus as he's been revealed to you in scripture. Take all that the Holy Spirit has revealed of him in scripture to you and let him bring that to life. So Holy Spirit, make Jesus real to that one receiving this prayer now. And I pray, Father, for the healing virtue of the Son of the living God to flow through right now. Lord, use me as a mere vessel of your healing power. I'm telling you, I can feel the healing power of God on my hands right now. I feel heat on me. Some of you are feeling the same thing. Some of you might even be feeling like electricity on your body. Just receive the healing power of God. Lord, I rebuke right now in Jesus' name every form of deadly sickness and disease, all pain and discomfort in the physical body. We cast it out now in Jesus' name. I, the servant of the Lord, rebuke that sickness now. And I agree with your word, Father, that declares them completely whole. Father, I pray, remove every disease. Make whole every condition. There's somebody watching me from South Africa. There's a problem with your right foot. There's a deformity on your right foot. God is healing you right now. Receive that in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the healing power of God flowing. Um, someone also from South Africa, there's a, there's a problem with a bone protruding on your hip. I don't, even, I don't know if it's an injury or if you, if you were born that way. There's a bone sticking out on your hip, and it causes you, you're in, you're in tremendous amount of pain. The doctors can't really do, in fact, no. In fact, you're, you went to the doctor, but you don't have the, the necessary resources to get done what needs to be done. Jesus is your healer. Lord, I pray complete and total healing in Jesus' name. Somebody just asked the Lord for their marriage to be healed. Yes, the healing anointing covers your marriage too. In Jesus' name and the mind, depression and anxiety have to go in Jesus' name. A blood condition has just been healed. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. Somebody's right ear, you were deaf in your right ear. It just popped open right now. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for your healing power. Just look, you don't, don't wait for me to call it out. Just focus on Jesus. Just begin to worship him. Call him healer. Call him master. Lord, I pray, make your people whole, for they are your people. In Jesus' name, And I want you to say, if you receive it, say, Amen. Wow, I, I can't wait to hear all the testimonies that come in. And we, we are so excited to hear from you. I've really felt the anointing flowing. And, and I believe that word was rich because it was from the Spirit. But it, that richness of the word is what starts to cultivate that faith in your heart. And you watch what the Lord will do with you. Okay, I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There are your names up on the screen. You see your names with your city and state or your city and country or region and we love you and we are praying for you i always say that because i always mean it if you want to join the spirit family or the spirit church go ahead and use the information at the bottom of the screen to go ahead and become a member it's absolutely free 
and you'll receive this teaching in your inbox, email inbox every single Sunday. Okay, I'm gonna read your comments now and then stick around to the end. I wanna give you yet another exciting update concerning our fundraising campaign that we've been doing, but uh, I'm gonna give you that update right now. But first, I'm gonna read your comments and these are from last week's video and my goodness, the response was tremendous. We had about triple the viewership on last week's video. I knew the Holy Spirit told me to talk about how to hear His voice. It was something you longed for. And so here are some of the comments from last week's video, how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Phyllis writes, thanks a lot for your teachings. They are really encouraging. I am happy to be a sheep of the Heavenly Father. May He bless you and give you more words to speak to His people. Samantha Lambreras writes, I really enjoyed this message and it relates to a lot of the things that I have been studying this week, especially when it comes to hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Blessings. Elaine writes, Thank you, Brother David, for sharing this message. It is a healthy bread for my spirit. Watching from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Wow, watching from all the way out there. We love you, we are praying for you, and thank you for watching Spirit Church here on Encounter TV. Gabriel writes, thank you for your obedience and teaching about the grace of God through Christ. Alvira Geosis writes, how sweet is Jesus? He always gives me answers to questions I have and gives confirmation through teachings on Encounter TV. I just can't believe what a beautiful thing it is to know Jesus. God bless this ministry once again. Well, that's one of the reasons why you have to continue to watch this broadcast, because you never know how the Holy Spirit is going to speak. Here on this program, and on all of our programs, really, we give room for the Holy Spirit, and it's really His broadcast. He can do whatever He wants with it. At any time, He can speak to a viewer, and that's one of the things I love about this channel. And the final comment for this session of Comment Review, I'm watching all the way from Cape Town, South Africa. I really do love your teachings. They are so spirit-filled and spirit-led with truth. God bless you all. And that is all the way from Cape Town, South Africa, which, by the way, I just received a couple of invites from Cape Town, South Africa. And I want to be able to say yes to these nations that invite us. You know, here in the States, or in the United States I'm referring to, Churches that invite us, they can afford to help us pay for some of the costs. So they bring us in, they help cover some of the travel expenses, some of the lodging expenses. We share the marketing expense on getting the word out for the people to come and receive from the Lord. But in other countries such as the Philippines or Fiji or South Africa, and I can go on naming several, the churches there don't have the resources needed to bring us out to them. And I so want to go, it burns within my heart to go and tell the whole world that Jesus saves. And I want you to continue to help me do that. Now, for those of you who don't know, and maybe you've never watched this far, we are in the middle of raising the monthly support needed for a couple of things that are coming up for this ministry. So when we first started this campaign a few months ago, I said that we needed a thousand new $30 a month partners. Now, these are not one-time givers. These are people who sign up and say, Brother David, I'm going to sign up for $30 a month, and I'm sticking with you for the long term. I've had people with me, some of them have been partnered with me five, six years now. Some of them even 10 years, when, back when we didn't really have even a partnership system in place, but they still support it continually. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about monthly support of the ministry. $30 a month, $10 a month, $5 a month. Some people do 100 whatever you can do monthly. So we needed a thousand new $30 a month partners to reach our goal, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But here's where we are on that campaign. This is the progress we've made. I'm excited because you're responding. We're making progress. Every week, we're getting closer and closer and closer to our goal. Why do we need that support? Well, that 1,000 new $30 a month marker has to do with a couple of things. Number one, our new production facility. And number two, the expansion of our worldwide events. Now, the monthly support that comes in is going to cover the monthly costs of our new facility. That being the rent or the lease, the air conditioning costs because we're gonna have studio audiences there, the new workers that have to come on board to help with all the work that we're doing. That's gonna house the brand new Encounter TV network. It's gonna be a 24 seven prayer room as well is gonna be there. But that also includes costs monthly like insurance, like security and so on and so forth. There are many monthly costs that come with owning or releasing a facility. And so we needed to raise a certain amount of monthly support to meet that 
need before we went out and did it. Now, a lot of ministries, and I'm not criticizing them, but this is just not the way the Lord spoke to me to do it. There are two ways you can do it. One, you can just move out and say, okay, and pressure the people. We need your support now. Come in or we have to shut down or oh, we can't do it. And that to me, you have to start getting an arm twisting and then people start using gimmicks and pressure to raise the finances. That's not how we do it. We do take steps of faith and we do stretch ourselves, but we don't put that pressure on the people. So what I'm asking you for is to partner with us to help us take care of the monthly cost for that facility. Also, when we get to that 1,000 new $30 a month partner level, we're going to be able to do more events more often and in more locations such as South Africa. So help us become a monthly partner. By the way, once we reach this $1,000 marker, then we'll go back to just doing regular monthly partner requests, and this way we can wrap that up. So if you do become a $30 a month partner, I'm going to send you either, which is your choice, Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. I'm going to send that to you signed as my thank you. It'll be your initiation gift if you sign up to become a partner for $30 or more a month. So go and do that today. At the end of this video, there's going to be a link that appears and you're gonna see a red button that says partner slash donate or donate slash partner, one of the two. Click that button when this video is over and it'll take you, sign up to become a partner today. Let's wrap this up and get on to the next phase. Now, if you have any questions about this campaign or any questions about this fundraising, leave a comment in the, in the section below for the comments and our staff will reply. We want to be 100% transparent just so you can see the progress. This is all very exciting. It's very big, which is why we wanna stay accountable to you our partners and our friends and our supporters. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.